these are the responses indicating that the server itself has created an error. Internal error, for example, indicates that the server experienced an issue that resulted in the server being unable to successfully process the request. This response may include a retry after header field to tell the client to try again after a certain period of time. Well, let's say Tarzan calls Jane, both are using SIP phones. When Tarzan's invite request hits Jane's SIP phone, perhaps her laptop that's hosting the SIP soft phone was experiencing a problem and as a result, this not so crucial process, the SIP phone call, could receive a 500 internal error response. 501 not implemented, similar to 405 method not allowed, this response indicates that the user agent server does not allow the respective request. However, unlike 405 method not allowed, here the method is not recognized. Now going back to the example we used for 405 method not allowed, let's say Jane's SIP phone does not support refer messages and also its software doesn't cover or know how to handle refer messages. Let's say they are on a call in which the methods both sides allow haven't been disclosed during the session establishment. If Tarzan at this point sends a refer message to Jane, he could receive a 501 not implemented response. 502 bad gateway indicates that the gateway or SIP proxy received an invalid response from the next hop the request was sent to. Let's say Tarzan uses his SIP proxy to call Jane. After Tarzan's SIP proxy sends the request to Jane's SIP proxy, if it realizes that Jane's SIP proxy is down, it may respond to Tarzan with 502 bad gateway response. 503 service unavailable. This is an indication that the user agent server is overwhelmed and its resources are not able to handle this request. This response may include a retry after header field to tell the client to retry the request after a certain period of time. If no retry after header field exists, the response should be handled the same way 500 server internal error response is handled. The user agent client that receives 503 service unavailable should try to send the request to other servers. So for example, Tarzan called Jane. Jane is streaming video on her rather old PC that she also uses for her SIP phone. The PC is seeing CPU and memory spikes during this time period. If Tarzan's call comes in at this point, it may receive a 503 service unavailable response. 504 server timeout. This response indicates that the server sent the request to the next hop or server in the path but it has not received the response in a timely manner. This is still a server error even though it's not the problematic server that is sending back the client the 504 server timeout. Let's say Tarzan uses his SIP phone to call Jane. After Tarzan's SIP phone sends the request to Jane's SIP phone, if it realizes that Jane's SIP phone is down, it may respond to Tarzan with 504 server timeout response. 505 version not supported indicates that the server does not support the SIP version used in the request. Obviously, if Tarzan calls Jane and his SIP phone uses a different version of SIP that Jane's SIP phone uses, Jane's SIP phone may respond with 505 version not supported. 513 message too large is an indication that the server was not able to process the request as the message length was more than it was able to support. So moving on to the 6xx global failures, 
these responses are related to the cold party's global presence. While the 3xx, 4xx, 5xx responses may be specific to one particular endpoint the cold party is using, 6xx responses are about all the endpoints related to the cold party. For example, 600 busy everywhere indicates that the cold party was reached at the endpoint targeted, but the cold party is busy and does not want to take the call. The cold party could also send 603 decline response if they do not wish to disclose a reason. In both scenarios, the response may include a retry after header field, indicating the time the caller should wait before repeating the attempt. Similarly, in both scenarios, there is no other endpoint available globally, for example, voicemail, chat, email, and so on. For cold party being busy at a single endpoint would result in 486 busy here response as discussed earlier. 604 does not exist anywhere is an indication that the cold party is not available anywhere globally as opposed to 404 not found that would be specific to a certain endpoint only. In other words, the cold party is not known by the servers available in the environment, nor do they know anywhere to send the calls to in hopes to reach that specific cold party. The final 6xx global failure defined in RFC 3261, 606 not acceptable, is a response the user agent server could send if the user agent server is contacted successfully and it is willing to communicate, but certain parts of the session description cannot be supported anywhere globally. In other words, the user agent server was reached, but the request had certain entries in the session description, perhaps in message body section with session description protocol, that cannot be supported. The response may also include a warning header field with some details about these entries.